Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Lauren. I do random content on my channel whenever I can. So I've currently started senior year of high school and it's taken me a while to work on this video as I've already been swamped with stuff with homework and stuff for college applications that I'm trying to make time to work on my videos. So please bear with me guys because I think this is how it's gonna be for the first semester. So I asked you guys on my community tab a couple of weeks ago what video you guys want to see before I went back to school. Now, I know the Ever After High video got the majority of votes. The problem, though, is that video is going to take me longer. Don't worry, though. The video is on its way, and I have been working on the iceberg image, trying to think of what to add into it and other stuff like that. So don't you all worry. It is coming. But anyway, since we're talking about this video, I have been wanting to talk about Wings Club and Miraculous for so long. So the structure of the video will be the plot, the characters, the fandom, racism slash whitewashing, and the creator. There will be timestamps in the video indicating when a certain part will begin and end. So if you want to go to a certain part of the video, there are your timestamps. Lastly, number one, this video is an opinions video as I'm going to be giving my own thoughts and opinions on both of these shows. And number two, please do not send any hate to anyone mentioned in this video. The purpose of this video is to not send hate and to be somewhat educational and like a critique on both of these shows and how it played out. So yeah, without further ado, sit back, relax, get a drink, get a snack, and let's get started with the video. The plot. Majority of you all who clicked on this video are probably aware of the plot of Miraculous and Wings Club, but just to give my own opinion on what I thought about the plot, I'm going to be looking at both of these shows and comparing them. Now, Wings Club and Miraculous have the shared superhero theme in both of these shows, but in Wings Club, it's the fairies, and in Miraculous, they're actually superheroes. So Miraculous's plot I fell in love with it. I started watching Miraculous when it came out. I think it was 2015. And I was a fifth grader, right? Or I was like about to be a middle schooler. And I remember watching the show. I thought it was such an interesting plot. And I want you guys to know, I was a fifth grader in 2015, 2016. I'm now a senior. I'm going to be going in as a senior. It's been seven years give or take it's been seven years since i started watching the show and since the show actually aired and we're going into what like season five six anyways so back to the plot like i said i fell in love with the plot because here you know you have marinette she's a shy girl in the civilian form you know and here she likes this guy adrian right and they're both superheroes but you know they don't know it yet and then when they go into like their superhero form, Adrian, who's Cat Noir, likes Ladybug, who is Marinette. And it kind of gets into like this little love square, I guess you can say. It's not even a triangle anymore, it's just a square. And then over time, other stuff happens where it's not even a square anymore. It's like a hexagon, an octagon. I honestly liked the biggest twist of Miraculous and it being that Adrian's father is the villain. You know, here we find that out at the end of one of the seasons. And I thought that was like the biggest twist because if you ask me, he has some good motivations, but like the wrong intention and the wrong way of going about it. You know, the one problem I have with Miraculous is plot because I have other problems with Miraculous. But the one problem I have with the plot is that the show seems to be dragging on. And I think some of you guys can agree with me on this because here, Marinette and Adrian, that the biggest climax of the whole thing is for them to find out that, you know, Marinette is Ladybug and Adrian is Cat Noir. That's the biggest thing that we are all waiting for. You know, we've all been sitting tightly in our chairs for seven years. I always feel like they hint at it and then they never actually make it happen. And they just use that as an excuse to push the plot even further. 
And to be honest, there's going to be a time where your show is going to burn out if you keep doing that. And I think Miraculous has already reached that point of a burnout because fans are already waiting, like I said, sitting tightly in their chairs for seven years. And fans are waiting for when it's going to happen. And to be honest with you all, I heard that Miraculous got renewed for, I think, an eighth season that will be coming out in like 2026, 2027. I'm going to be 21. 21. At this point in time, the show would have been already a decade old. A little more than a decade old. And it's it's just like, when is it going to be enough to just end it there? You know, so you can kind of say that you had a good run, a good plot. I already touched upon the plot of Wings Club in my last video essay, which there'll be a link if you guys want to go see that video because that one was a fun one to make. But anyways, a little refresher. So Wings Club follows our main character, Bloom, as she finds out she's a fairy. She goes to Althea. You know, she meets Tecna, Stella, Alicia, Musa, and Flora. They become the best of friends. And the main plot point of Wings Club is for Bloom to meet her parents, her real parents, because she finds out she's adopted and now she wants to meet her real parents who were the king and queen of Domino. Domino is her homeland and it is lost, I guess you can say. So it takes us through three seasons and then a movie for Wings Club. Then it kind of like, you know, goes on after that where they should be God. If you ask me, they should be God fairies. But that's basically Wings Club in a nutshell and the plot of Wings Club in a nutshell. Now, Wings Club and Miraculous, like I said, their plots are pretty similar, but of course, different in most aspects. But I want you all to take into consideration, look at this. So, Wings Club, of course, it started in like 2004. They hit their plot point in around 2012. When the first movie came out, that was when Wings Club should have wrapped up their whole thing because we're told from the very beginning that the main motivation and the plot point of Wings Club is for Bloom to find her parents and, you know, bring back the lost kingdom of Domino and everything like that. Wings Club had hit that plot point with the first movie. The problem, though, is they decided to go fully after that. And, you know, they made them godlike fairies. Wings Club continued forward into like season eight and then also World of Wings, where slowly but surely they changed the designs of the characters and made them more childish. And the plot wasn't really there anymore because they had already finished the main building up point that Wings Club had, which was Blue meeting her parents. Now, in the case of Miraculous, Miraculous has not even hit that plot point. That's where, you know, my comparison comes in. Miraculous has been constantly pushing the plot point of Adrian and Marinette finding out their identities. They have been pushing it, and they're probably going to keep pushing it to like season 8, 2030. You guys already know they're going to have something out in 2030. They're going to keep pushing it where the show is already burning out because they're not already getting to that point. You know, they keep finding other ways to push the plot even further, but at the same time, it's becoming a burnout. It's becoming a burnout, and I think some of you guys can agree with me on this. Now, before I get anything like, oh, Lauren, Adrian revealed himself to Marinette, I am aware of that. I am aware that Adrian revealed himself to Ladybug and that Luca is aware of who Ladybug and Cat Noir is. The thing is though, guys, how long has it taken the show to get there? You get me? We've had the show since 2015. How long did it take for them to get to that point? 
it's been a long time and it'll probably take even longer for them to get to the point where Marinette is going to say that she's Ladybug. You know, because they got to keep the plot going. How else are they going to make money? Don't get me wrong, though. I still love Miraculous. I'll still watch it. My favorite episode was the Cop Blanc episode. That one was the best one, if you ask me. But it's more the fact that it's been dragging on that just bothers me with the show. And it could bother you guys as well. But it bothers me because it's like they're waiting too long. They're waiting too long. Just in case I get the whole, Lauren, you're being a hypocrite. Here, Miraculous is taking just as long as Wings Club took. Yes, you have a point. You have a point to some extent. The thing is, though, with Wings Club, it started in 2004. But the first movie, which is the Secret of the Lost Kingdom movie, that was made in 2007. However, it was only in Italy. We didn't get the movie in the US until 2012, 2011. And that was because of the dubbing dispute. Before Nickelodeon dubbed Wings Club, four kids and other companies were in charge of dubbing Wings Club. Wings Club ended its contract with four kids, which prompted Nickelodeon to pick up the series. And this is how we got the 2012 re-release of the first Wings Club movie. And the first movie of Wings Club already wraps up the plot like I had mentioned earlier. The characters. Starting with Miraculous, I think the character that everyone hates, you already know, it's Lila. I strongly dislike her and they made her the perfect villain if you ask me. Like, Ooh, they did good, like where they made the audience hate her. Like that's when you know they made a good villain. It's the fact that she does so much wrong and so much evil and then she plays innocent. That's what sends me and like everybody else into like this rampage, you know, with the pitchforks and torches. But anyways, they wrote her to be a very, very good villain. And if you ask me, I don't know if it's happening, but... If Lila and Felix meet, they would be perfect villains together. Like the perfect villains because they both have like some motivation to like, you know, Lila wants to get Adrian, I guess, from Marinette. She has like something against Marinette. And then Felix, I think in a way, has something against Adrian or at least that's what I interpret. But you already know that would be amazing to see if you ask me. I think another character we need to talk about is Chloe. I feel like Chloe should have been given her redemption and I think the creators were pretty close to doing it, but either they forgot or they just never did it and Chloe just never got her redemption. And I don't know, I just feel like after we meet Chloe's mom, we see kind of the reason why Chloe is the way she is because Chloe's mom seems to be very neglective and even borderline abusive. So it would have been cool to see Chloe just express how she felt about it and hopefully change as a person and everything like that. I think when Lila hit the picture, we kind of like started seeing Chloe in a way change, I guess you can say, but never that full redemption. And I wish we would have gotten that. We also need to talk about Luca. You already know. I personally liked Luca for Marinette and I get she doesn't like him. I know that already. I personally liked them together, especially because, you know, Luca was always there for Marinette and everything. Even when she told him how she felt like about Adrian, he was encouraging. He was, he was probably upset, you know, but he encouraged it. And that's what I really liked about his character. He still is going to be friends with her. He'll still encourage everything, even if she doesn't like him back. And I love that. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I was not really a big fan of Adrian and Marinette together. Okay, before y'all come for me, because I know I'm like sitting on nails right now after saying that. Before y'all come for me, I wasn't a big fan of them because at first, I really thought that if Adrian and Marinette were going to end up together, it was going to be because Adrian knows she's Ladybug. You get me? That's why I was a little iffy about it because it's like, 
oh, I'm gonna date her because she's this person, not because of the way she actually is, it's because she's this person. And it's like, you know, that's a big no right there, a little red flag to me at least. But according to how the show is going right now, it seems that Adrian is starting to like Marinette and not like Ladybug. You get me? So at least that's happening, but I'm sorry. I'm still a Luca and Marinette fan. I also really liked Kagami's character, but I swear to God, I recall in the fandom when Kagami and Adrian got together, the fandom lost it and they started hating on her and bashing her as a character. You know, before I even go off in this section, I feel like I should wait until I get to the fandom section. I really liked Kagami's character, especially because, you know, we start to see her make friends and everything like that. And even get a Miraculous, I really liked her transformation. I just think the fandom was very, very hard on her and I could not comprehend why. And I don't know why that was the case, but like I said, I will get into it when I do talk about the fandom section. Now, Gabriel, his character, as a villain is so good that it gets the audience to like really despise him and that's when you know you wrote a very good villain his motive is there but the way he's going about his intention is bad and it's going to backfire so like most of us know the reason why gabriel is so adamant on getting ladybug and cat noir's miraculous is because he wants to, like, revive his wife, Emily, Adrian's mother, who is living in their basement, basically. So Emily is in a coma-like state, and many fans actually have the theory that the reason why she is like that is because she may have used the Peacock Miraculous, and because of its damage, it ended up causing her to go into a coma-like state. I don't know. It's... There is a theory, if you ask me, especially because we see Natalie use it and then she gets very weak and stuff after using the Miraculous. But anyways, if you ask me, guys, I feel like Natalie's trying to like get with Gabriel also. She's like a big simp. But technically, he's still married, right? Because she's Emily's not dead yet. So like, what does that make Natalie? Does that make her a homewrecker or something? Lastly, Marinette and Adrian. I already know that the plot is mainly pushing for them two to end up together. And I kind of want to see it, especially for my fifth grade self. You know, I had shipped them when I was in fifth grade and started watching the show. But as I got older, I kind of saw a little bit of flags here and there, I guess you can say. In a way, like, it's kind of like Wings Club. And I'll get to that right after this. But... How can, how can I explain it? I don't know. It just feels a bit weird that Marinette, especially like in the early seasons of Miraculous, she was a little bit obsessive with Adrian. And that's already a bit, you know. It's just weird to me that they made her very obsessed with him in the early seasons. And that kind of, like I said, is a bit weird, especially if they're going to be in a relationship. That's kind of a flag, I guess you can say. But anyways, I do want to see them end up together, but I do feel a little iffy about their relationship. And it's for that reason. And I think something else, but I cannot point my finger on it. It's weird for me to explain. I don't know how to explain it. Now, moving on to Wings Club, the first character I'm going to talk about is Diaspro. Now, Diaspro is a character I sympathize with. I don't really see her as a villain, even though the show kind of painted her as a villain to Bloom and Sky's relationship. You know, that she was trying to, in a way, break them up and stuff. The thing is, though, I really sympathize with her, and it's because here she was promised that she was gonna marry Sky. And, like, technically, her and Sky were engaged. Like, seriously, she was his fiance, and. They were going to get married and stuff, and all of a sudden, Sky did not end it properly, if you ask me. He just went off with Bloom and left her brokenhearted. 
he left diaspora brokenhearted, let me specify. Now don't get me wrong, there was the instance when Diaspora made the deal with Valtor and then she poisoned Sky. And I'm not blaming Sky for that or for any of Diaspora's villain tendencies as she did that on her own accord. But it's more the fact that Sky did not end it properly with Diaspora and he just ran off with Bloom. And that's what kind of pissed me off, especially when I looked into it as a teenager, especially for that Wings Club Iceberg video I did, I looked into it and I lost my respect for Sky, And I kind of lost my respect for the Bloom and Sky ship, which I was an avid shipper of. And let me get into it right now. So Bloom and Sky, I was a big fan of Bloom growing up and I still am. She was always my favorite character in Wings Club. But Sky, you two-timing cheater. I'm not really a fan of him anymore and their whole ship. I feel like Bloom and Sky's ship was a little toxic and nobody talks about it because it was like closeted toxicity. The main toxic ship they always talked about in Wings Club was Musa and Riven. But they don't tell you about Bloom and Sky, you know, it's under wraps. You need to look into it. And it's because these two never communicated with each other. They always had problems communicating. And then also, Sky did not break up with Diaspora properly, so Diaspora started coming after Bloom. You get me? And I get that Diaspora and Sky's marriage was arranged. I do get that. But he still should have ended it properly and not just run away from it, in a way. Do you get me, guys? Do you get me? I held so much respect for these two as a little seven-year-old. But 10 years later, you know, I realized where it went wrong. And the thing also, I am so sad that the show actually never showed them getting married. You know, at the end of the first movie of Wings Club, Sky proposes to Bloom. But then all of a sudden, they don't get married. And I'm so upset. I'm so freaking pissed that they never once decide to go that route. Especially like season 5 or season 4, whichever one was after the movie, they could have had that. It's what we could have had, guys, even though I'm not a fan of them anymore. But it's what we could have had. Now lastly, I gotta talk about Valtor, the best villain if you ask me. He was the best villain in Wings Club. Valtor had pretty big motives, especially to be like strong. He was kind of like the average villain in Wings Club, but the way he was able to control everyone around him and he was very powerful, it, the battles were there, everything was there. The one thing I hate though, is that people were shipping him with Bloom because he was a little curious about her because she had the power of the dragon flame. You know, like every villain is with Bloom, every villain is curious about her because the power of the dragon flame is still alive. Valtor got all the hoes, you already know, like he had the witches falling at his feet. I don't know why they made them into big sims for him, but I think it was because of how much dark power he had and he could give the witches. That's why, you know, he had them on their feet. But still, still, one of the best villains, like I said, and I should have brought this up, or actually I did bring this up in the Fate series. I really wish they would have went about Valtor being a villain in the Fate series. The fandom. I think there's more regarding the Miraculous fandom than there is the Wings Club fandom because it's been God knows how long since Wings Club has gotten anything new besides the Fate series. While with Miraculous, you know, the fandom is still going very strong. Starting off with Miraculous, I have to bring up the amount of racism that was towards Kagami's character. No, because seriously, when Adrian and Kagami got together, some people in the fandom went off on her character. They were being racist towards her character. 
They were calling her Kakagami, which basically means shit. And it baffled me because I don't recall anyone doing that when Luca and Marinette ended up together. You see where I'm coming from? Like, here Luca was also with Marinette and technically, in a way, if you're looking at it, how you looked at it with Kagami, Luca is getting in the way of Marinette and Adrian's relationship also. But why did everyone just hate on Kagami but not Luca? It didn't make sense to me and it still doesn't to this day. If you ask me, neither of them should have gotten any hate, but the racism towards Kagami was high. It was like exponentially high and it made me question because Kagami is Japanese. How can you be racist to an Asian character when the main character is half Asian? Like seriously, did it not occur to some of you guys who were being racist to Kagami's character that Marinette is half Asian? So like why why would you that doesn't that doesn't make sense to me. And look, I get you can hate a character, but there is no excuse to be racist towards a character. Another instance could be when Alia got the Ladybug Miraculous. I think this took place in season four, but Alia had gotten the Ladybug Miraculous and she looked amazing if you ask me. However, some people in the fandom were not really happy with it and were pretty racist when it came to it. Now, what doesn't sit well with me is that here they're out here being racist to a character just because they got the Ladybug Miraculous, but when Adrian got it, there was no uproar or anything. You get me? There was no negative stuff towards him. The YouTuber Harry on a Hook, which by the way, I love her videos, she has made several videos regarding Miraculous and the racism within the fandom and the show. If you guys want more insight on the racism within the Miraculous fandom, I would recommend to go check out her videos. Her videos are always well detailed and I personally enjoy them. Now when it comes to Wings Club, I have yet to see anything regarding the fandom as it's been a good while since Wings Club's original seasons have aired. The whitewashing and racism will be brought up in the next section of this video as that was regarding the show. But other than that, if any of you guys know anything regarding the fandom of Wings Club and like what problematic thing it's done, please let me know in the comments of the video because I have yet to find anything regarding it. <music> Racism slash whitewashing. Both Miraculous and Wings Club have a history of racism and whitewashing occurring in both of their shows. Starting off with Miraculous, according to the Twitter user NoirXBug or Kaya, they made a Twitter thread regarding Thomas Estruck and the problems with Miraculous. I will talk about how Thomas Estruck is problematic, but that will be in the next section. Anyways, Kaya makes mention to two episodes in Miraculous that were both dealing with racism. In the episodes Kung Fu and Animistro, one of the main characters, Chloe, is shown making racist remarks regarding Japanese culture. Chloe receives no repercussion for her actions and simply states her racist remarks without being told right from wrong. Here is the clip from the episode. Doesn't he know how to make sushi like everyone else? Listen, Marinette, if we don't sacrifice a few macarons now, Adrian will be eating sushi for the rest of his life. These two scenes are already bad, but what makes it worse is that Miraculous is a kid's show. Like, it's not for teens. This is a show that airs on the Disney Channel to children. And the fact that Chloe gets no repercussion just makes it worse because you're showing this to children. Another instance that gets brought up is the whitewashing that occurs with Alia and Nino when they both transform into their superhero counterparts. Honestly, I can see it, especially with Alia, because literally Alia and her superhero counterpart are side by side, and you can see a difference in the skin color. And who knows, it could be the lighting or it could be the light reflecting off her costume, but it's there. 
there seems to be a little bit of whitewashing there. There has also been the accusation that the characters are purposefully made skinnier in their hero costumes. Like, look at this picture of Alia. They made her thighs much more skinnier in her hero costume. I get that the hero costumes are skin tight, but there should be no reason as to why her thighs are smaller and thinner in that costume. Like, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I do dance. Some of you guys know I do dance. And I have to wear sometimes skin tight stuff, like, you know, tights and even skin tight pants for certain costumes, but never once does it change my thighs from the way they are into something smaller and thinner. It doesn't make sense to me, it really doesn't. There is an obvious difference with these two side by side. There's an obvious difference. There is a lot more stuff regarding Miraculous, but I will touch upon it when we get to the creator portion of this video. Now, Wings Club has a case of both racism and whitewashing. Most fans may not know, but in season 1, there is a banned episode. Episode 12 from season 1 was titled Miss Magics. This episode is banned off the official Wings Club YouTube channel as it has racial connotations regarding a black girl and her hair. I honestly had no idea this episode existed and I only was made aware of this episode existing when I did research on it for my iceberg video of Wings Club. So in the episode, there is one particular scene that has to do with a black girl and her hair. Her hair, I guess it poofs up and it becomes a frizzy afro. Some of the characters kind of shame this character for how her hair is, which would be hair discrimination. Here is the scene from the episode. Terrible. A catastrophe. Look what happened to my hair. Normally it's straight. I was just walking down the hall when poof, my whole head of hair popped up just like that. <laughs> what is that? This particular scene from the episode is pretty racist, as like I said, it does shame the girl for having an afro. Instead of redubbing the episode or cutting out this particular scene from the episode, the official Wings Club YouTube channel decided to completely remove this episode from its lineup. However, you can still find the episode, the full episode, on YouTube. You just need to search for it. But like I said, the official Wings Club YouTube channel will not have it up. Now, Wings Club, in its later seasons, was pretty known for the whitewashing problem. The whitewashing affected two characters in particular, Flora and Adisha. Adisha is coded to be black, and Flora is coded to be Hispanic. In the original seasons, Flora's skin color was like a light brown. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, as someone who's Hispanic, I really liked that representation that I had growing up, seeing Flora on screen, as well as the entire Wings cast, because it was such good representation for, you know, children. It was really good representation. In the later seasons, though, they made Flora pretty whitewashed where she almost looks white. Now, don't get me wrong, Hispanics come in different shades and colors, but Flora was originally tan, almost light brown in her skin color. Then later on in the seasons, they kind of take that away where they make her more light complected. And the problem I have is that, you know, she was representation for tan, almost dark-complected Hispanic girls. And the fact that it was kind of taken away, that's the problem I have with it. Now, regarding Adisha, Adisha in the earlier seasons was coded to be black, and she still is. However, in the later seasons of Wings Club, they lighten her skin where it looks like Flora's original color, at least in my opinion. To this day, I have no idea why this was done, and I think Nickelodeon was a big part of it, as Nickelodeon did work on the later seasons of Wings Club. But like I said, Wings Club was a big staple for representation in the early 2000s and the early 2010s, because, you know, we had characters like Musa, who was Asian, Flora, who was Hispanic, Aisha, who was Black. You know, we had a mix of characters and then like 
Regarding the fairy powers, we had Tecna who was basically a STEM girl. You know, we had, we had that. And then for it to be taken away in the later seasons for young girls who want to start watching Wii's Club and they see that, it's like, what happened? The creators. Miraculous was created by Thomas Estruck and he is pretty problematic as what I've seen on YouTube, TikTok, and just the internet in general. And Wings Club was created by Ignola Strafi. Now, Wings Club's creator does not really have a problematic past or aspect compared to Thomas Estruck. So I'm not really going to talk about Ignola Strafi, but I am going to be talking a lot more about Thomas Estruck. Now, Thomas Estruck is pretty notorious in the Miraculous fandom for not being able to take criticism pretty well, especially on Twitter. When looking through the r slash Miraculous Ladybug subreddit, a creator asked, Why do some people not like Thomas Estruck? I really don't know anything about him. One Redditor, CursedI03, responded to this question by saying, His behavior on Twitter. He blocks a lot of fans who have a different opinion than his, and it's not unusual for a fan to get blocked for asking him a simple question. But the thing that damaged his reputation the most among fans was the Cat Noir scandal from last year. To summarize, he called the Cat Noir fans sexists for wanting more screen time for Adrian. Many people obviously disagreed and started stating their opinions, and he just started blocking everyone who didn't agree with him. The worst part was that he made a tweet about him being proud of himself for blocking 500 fans for only two days. I'ma be honest with you all, I had no idea this happened, but that is crazy. How do you have the time to block everybody? That's my question. I actually found the tweet that that Redditor was talking about. I can't comprehend. How do you have the time to do that? So I found the tweet, like I was saying, and it's from June 2020. And the Redditor's post that I was just telling you guys about was from 2021, because it said a year ago on the Reddit thing. Anyways, so reading the tweet, and I'm going to show it to you guys right now also. Basically, this tweet from Thomas Estruck says, News from the spring cleansing. So far, I have blocked nearly 500 haters. And something I have also noticed is that he refers to people or anybody who gives him criticism or just an ounce of their opinion, he will refer to them as haters. Because this is not the first time I have seen him refer to people as haters. Because I've seen YouTubers like Harry on the Hook talk about it and other YouTubers talk about how Thomas Estruck will refer to anyone who gives him an opinion or criticism as a hater. Another reason why a lot of people don't really like Thomas Estruck is that he kind of refuses to give Chloe a redemption. Now, going back to the Twitter thread I had brought up earlier by Kaya or Noir X Bug, they brought up the episode where Chloe was being racist and they actually confronted Thomas Estruck about it on Twitter. In the Twitter thread that was compiled, this is what Kaya said. I actually called Thomas out for this and his response to why he made the character the way she was was because she's stupid and he argued that children should automatically understand that what Chloe said was wrong. This is what the tweet said. Why did you have to write Chloe as racist at Thomas Estruck? That makes you racist. Like, you couldn't have given her any toxic teenage girl traits, but you chose to make her discriminate against Asian culture? Why? Thomas Estruck responds, because she's stupid. Kaya then continues on by saying, the problem is that young and impressionable viewers were never taught that what Chloe said was wrong. If there was a lesson taught or if she were to have a consequence for her actions, then it would be acceptable. It would be dealing with racism, but her making a racist remark. Thomas Estruck then responds with, Kids understood perfectly. Don't worry for them. And don't use them as an excuse for your own misunderstandings. I honestly let out like a little shocked face. I don't know how to respond to that. K 
kids don't know you need to teach them right from wrong like no kid is born racist but they can become racist if you do not teach them properly to respect others you get me so i don't know what to say to that i really don't know what to say to his response kaya continues the twitter thread by saying you can argue the fact that chloe is a typical mean teenage girl which is true but my problem is that chloe received absolutely no backlash from her statements if the show were to actually deal with the concept of racism there would have been a moral to the story or an instance where chloe was punished or lectured not even the protagonist marinette scolded chloe on why what she said was wrong therefore how are young and impressionable children supposed to know that this is discriminatory Another instance that Kaya brings up was having to do with a miraculous comic. Content warning, racism and pedophilia. This is the most disgusting piece of evidence of Thomas being a racist I have ever seen. In an official miraculous ladybug comic, Marinette, a 13 to 15 year old girl, is transformed naked and approaches a group of black men and immediately assumes they are looting. There was also an episode in Miraculous where a literal adult wanted to get with Ladybug. I'll be honest with you all, when I was younger, I thought that was so weird. And I wondered why was that an episode. And I still do to this day. Going back to Reddit, another Redditor makes a comment about Thomas Struck's behavior. For a guy who makes an uplifting series, he himself is pretty toxic. Yes, there are fans who overstep and harass him, but for the ones who don't and honestly question certain contradictions in Miraculous, he behaves quite rude, obnoxious, and arrogant. He's not the one to defuse arguments, but rather escalate them. When he starts dodging questions with sarcasm or troll-like comments, it just fuels more tension between fans. Also, he has no problem banning fans, and I think him gloating about it is just a cherry on top. So to end off the video, I finally got to do the video I really want to do about comparing Miraculous and Wings Club and just talking about both the shows and giving my opinions on them. I really enjoyed this video. I'm sorry it did take me a long time to finish it as school's already... It's the, I'm going into the third week of school, guys, and I'm already kind of tired. <laughs> Anyway, though, I want to graduate, so I'm pushing through, you guys. I'm pushing through, and you all should, too. So for those of you guys who are starting school or who have already started school, be safe. Do well in school, kids. Stay in school. And, yeah, just overall be safe in everything you do. Anyways, so the Ever After Iceberg, I'm aiming for it to be my next video. So it may take me a while because it's an iceberg, but I do hope you all are patient with me and I promise to have it up when I can. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share. Comment down below what else you guys want me to talk about on my channel. I really hope you all enjoyed the video. Thank you guys so much for the love on my Wings Club and Monster High video essay I had posted a couple of weeks ago. It's at like 6,000 views thank you guys so much as well as my monster high reaction to the trailer 8,000 views you all you all are amazing i'm so happy for it and i'm about to hit a thousand and three hundred subscribers so thank you guys so much you all are amazing thank you guys so much for your support and have a great day or night depending on where you live and i'll see you guys next time on my channel bye guys